Hello, I am Simon from Biffy Clyro and I am here today at Radio One's Academy and I'm going to teach you how to play May of Horror, whether you want it or not. The guitar, actually I should say the guitar is tuned to a drop D, so you should be able to play that, which is just a D chord and it basically involves lowering the E string down to a D and to be honest it's, it's kind of cheating because you can do it, everything sounds cool with this. Although I don't know if that sounded cool. So anyway, drop D tuning and many of horror. It started like this. So for verse one and the very start of Many of Horror, first chord is this one. The ninth fret, I put my third finger in a dead in that A string. So if you could, it should sound, those two bottom strings should just sound one note. Then I put my first finger on the seventh fret of the G string. So that's your sound for your first chord with the open D string, which is the third one. So. So that's your sound. So the first three chords in that shape go. So there's two frets between the first two chords. You're going nine there and seven there, 11 there and nine there, and then 12 and 11. So if you just want to practice that, just it should just be. So that's quite a good way just to make sure you have the right shape. Their D string, which is the third string here, drones through everything. So the opening would be. Now, if, if you can't quite pluck that D string at the right time and space, don't worry, you can just simplify it to start. So just. If that's easier. And just remember, none of these, none of the B and E string top two are being plucked on this song so your key string there is that D try and keep that ringing through the whole song so there's your your first two shapes on the verse that's the sound now it's a similar movement for the next part of the verse but it's slightly further down so you're going down to the fourth fret and the second fret so again if you just it should be that sound so that's your bottom string. A string still dead, deadened. D string. And the G string, you should have your finger on the second fret. So. so. Now that's a slightly different slide up this time. So the sound should be. So fourth, fifth, and seventh fret for your third finger. So the third finger should go. So even if you want to practice that first. And then if you want to practice the G string as well, it should be. And if you can put them together. Oh my God. Me! There's slightly different gaps. There's a two fret gap from the first chord and then a one fret gap. So that up until this point it should be. Again, that D string is so important. The third part of the verse, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll break this verse down into four mini sections. And the third part is. So that's the sound you should be making again. If you just want to find your finger, 14th fret for the third one, 12th in the first, 14 and 12, 12 and 11, and then I uh, can't count, 9 and 7. So that's back to your first chord. So. And then the very last B part of the verse is almost exactly the same. It goes from that. 
chord, which is actually an E, an E minor. So E minor, D major, A major. So as you can see, it's whenever you're down in that fret, that's your shape. Whenever you're in that fret, that's your shape. That's your shape for the seventh. That's your shape for the ninth. Uh, this is pretty, this is turning very pretty. That's your shape for the eleventh, and that's your shape for the twelfth. And then I guess there is one more, which is that one. And the difference between these chords is when you hear a chord that sounds like sad, that's a minor. And if you need a happy major. So that is the verse. So let's try and string this together slowly if we can. So. That's your first verse, your second verse, and the big section in the middle with the woes. If you know this song, you'll, you'll know what I mean. So I'll just show you how the, you transition that into a heavier section for the woe later in the song. Which is That section will take you through the majority of the song. I'm going to move into the pre chorus section now. This bit's slightly trickier. Your first finger goes in a wee run here, I guess. So this goes. So did you catch that? That goes from 7, 9, 11. And don't worry about keeping that bottom string on. You could go. But I'm not a fan of that. It's, it's too suggestive. So I try and just keep it single string and then same this way. That's probably your toughest part of the song which when it, the first finger goes from the second fret right up to the seventh and back to the fourth. So let me do that slow, that pre-chorus. It's very simple, the same thing twice. same shapes as we've already investigated in verses, so one more. And that is, that's the lead-in chord to the chorus, that just one last chord just before the chorus. And see with that what one first finger slide, it's it's tricky to do, but see, once you, once you get it, it's really smooth, really natural, and it's a lot of fun to play. Now let's go straight to the chorus. You can play the chorus just as chords, so that as chords it's just a D. We collide, we come together. A B minor. If we don't, which is, if you've ever picked up guitar, you might be familiar with that shape. So that's, I guess your B there. That's how it should sound, bottom to top. And you notice I'm not plucking the bottom string because it's a B chord and I want the B to be the first note that you hear. So, we collide and come together. If we don't, we'll all. And then down to a G, B apart. Now that's just the same as, as a normal G, which is there, except because that bottom string is tuned down, you have to play the bottom string slightly further up. So, it's just the same idea as that. So that and that's that's the basis of the chorus. If you want to get a wee bit trickier, the first chorus has a bit of finger picking again and a bit of m melody going on up top. Because I learned to play violin before I learned to play guitar, I think I've 
I've always thrown in kind of different wee melodies up the top, which which are probably quite unusual for guitarists. But so this is quite tricky. This. So on this chorus, it's your your finger in the bottom string is not doing much work. It stays there, goes to the B there, which is fret nine, and then down to five. The tricky part is doing the top melody, which you don't have to do to play the song. You can just stick to these chords, as I said, but let's say you want to try it. My God. That's the last wee embellishment of the song is, is in the chorus I add. So we go from that shape, which we've used a lot right from the start of the song. Remember the start of the song went. So that's your shape that you're basing the start of the chorus. It's just. And then you put that first finger on the 10th fret on the B string and it goes. Again, just a pretty wee thing. It, that kind of thing only comes when she played the riff around a few times, and that came actually probably when I started singing. Plus, the thing about playing a riff like this in the guitar, that's where I got my vocals from for this song, was bass around the guitar riff rather than the other way around, which is probably quite unusual. So, I think that's pretty much it for the song. You know, that's the chorus section. Once more, for simplicity, the chorus is We climb, we come together So you can do that, or you can do even simpler. If we don't, we'll always be apart. But we don't like that, we like this. So much prettier. So, and that's it. So, once you have the shapes, which you can even practice just running. That's all quite a, way, a good way to get used to these shapes. Here we go, I'm going to play the song top to bottom. You say I love you, boy. But I know you lie. I trust you all the same.
in O section and you can add in the notes. That's the chin. Good luck. I hope you have some fun there tonight.